So let's give this another shot. I'm uh, not convinced that I won't kill it with a thunder shock, so I'm gonna just go with quick attack and kind of hope for the best here. Now, um, there. Okay, I need to not get a critical. Also, that would be nice. Please don't critical again. Okay, this is perfect. Now, um, there was a comment in the last video saying that, like, due to a glitch in the coding, getting it to a low health like that won't actually help. I don't know if that's true, but it worked there, so either I got lucky or... I don't know. Okay, it sure is just a bird, so... Uh, we're gonna call this one... Fat Hadoo, because that's pretty much what it is. It's not as fat as it is in the uh, red and blue sprite, but uh, that's pretty much all it is. He blinded me with glitches. So, anyways, uh, no, let's not get it any more encounters, please. I'm still not convinced that Pikachu isn't sneezing when you hear the cry and uh, fast forward there. Alright, so let's uh, dump this thing off, I don't need it. And Pikachu, are you still at full health? Yeah, you are, I don't really need to heal. So we're gonna go ahead and do this because it was requested of me. Um, I checked what this did off screen and I wasn't exactly pleased with the results, but it was harmless enough, so... We're gonna do that again, and uh... As we saw in the last video, that actually does put Pikachu to sleep, which means it doesn't <clears throat> won't actually follow you. So, what happens when we're off screen with Pikachu not following? Apparently some really stupid things. So we're gonna walk a certain number of steps, I think it's like 256, and uh, we're about to have some good stuff happen. And by good stuff, I mean kind of just generally disappointing. Now let's do double speed. I don't want it to go too fast. Oh, there we go. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, this, this isn't actually what happened last time. Last time the game just flat out crashed, and I got a message from the, uh... Like, the kimono girl on the Stadium 2 menu saying that, like, the file was unplayable and I had to select new game. Which I luckily did not actually have to do, but, uh, either way, don't need to worry about that anymore. We've, uh, we've gotten that out of the way, so. Not much else to do in Pewter City. I don't feel like going into the museum, so let's just move on to Route 4, and I'll actually not, or this is Route 3. Um, I'm gonna actually not be speeding up for a little bit at least. Bunch of trainers here. I could skip a bunch of these, but it's not really gonna do me a lot of good to save them for later, so I might as well fight them now just to kind of get my levels up. Um, I, I've kind of planned out the beginning of this run fairly well. Um, but it's still gonna be a little bit before I get my first real team member, and um, the idea of leaving behind trainers for them to beat for extra experience is kind of a good one, but it's not really going to be that much faster than just grinding off of wild Pokemon, especially since I'd have to specifically go out of my way to get back here, so I'm just going to go ahead and fight them all anyway. Um, when I did do the test playthrough, I, uh, it, it, the test playthrough was basically just up to when I was able to catch my first team member. It didn't really go any further than that. Um, I don't remember what, Pika what level the Pikachu was, but, um, I pretty much just need to be able to beat the next rival fight with it, and if I just grind off of the mandatory trainers and ignore everybody else, I think that'll still be good enough, but it doesn't, ha it doesn't hurt to have some, uh, to have, like, some insurance, I suppose. And yeah, you know what, this is boring as hell, let's just speed this up. <laughs> I don't want the entire playthrough to be in super speed, but it is very handy to have. Alright, 
right, so double team. We're gonna get rid of Tail Whip for that. That is, uh... I like having Tail Whip for fighting, like, Geodudes and stuff. But, um... Having the Evasion Hacks is actually more useful. So, we're just gonna deal with it. Oh boy, it's Shorts Kid, everybody's favorite. But, um, other than just the extra insurance experience here, uh, do I have potions? I have one. I guess I'm gonna have to use that. Um, so I don't actually have anything to switch to. Come on, game. Thank you for not using rap again. I'm gonna actually go back and heal after this. Um, so other than the insurance experience here, um, I'm also fighting them to get more money, because I am gonna be needing that. Since I'm here, actually. Uh... Oh, there's no repels here? Crap, I thought there was. Well, I do need an escape rope, so I'll take one of those. Um, I guess I'll just buy two more Pokeballs to make myself broke. I'm concerned by the lack of repels. Um, are there any back in Viridian? Something tells me there's not. I should probably check that, though. Uh, there are indeed no repels back in Viridian, so... Um, it'll eventually be clear why I want those. But uh, I guess we'll just have to reload saves and stuff if that becomes a problem. Alright, so let's go ahead and fight some more trainers. As long as I can one-shot stuff, uh, it's not going to take terribly long. And of course, as soon as I say that, I can't actually one-shot stuff. Is this our first Kakuna? Well, it's dead now, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, I remember yesterday, or not yesterday, but in the last video when I said how... Uh, like Weedle was just removed from the forest, because they didn't do that here. These trainers are all exactly the same as they were in Red and Blue. Um, felt no need to change their rosters, which I still don't really know why they changed the other ones, but I am not completely concerned with that. Let's immediately forget how to control the game. <laughs> No, it's like, for some reason, the, I think the D-pad on this controller is really mushy or something. It's, it might be a relative of the Genesis controller that Joel was having to use for Sonic. Because it, your character just goes all over the damn place when you try to move in a straight line with this sometimes. No, I don't want the mark. Alright, so how many trainers are left on this route? I don't think there's too many. There's this one here, and then there's a girl, I think, and then that should be it. And there is a uh, grass patch here, which, uh, again, going into unnecessary changes between versions in, uh, in red and blue, you could get... Uh, I like the done like dinner line. I, I always quote that one for some reason. In red and blue, you can get Jigglypuff here. For some reason, they removed it in this version, and they added in uh, Sandshrew and Mankey. And uh, we already have a Mankey. Sandshrew is actually going to be available in Mount Moon also, which they also changed. So um, we're probably just going to catch it there. I don't feel like looking for one out here. So, I am not going to worry about the grass in this area. So, where do you find Jigglypuff then if it isn't here? I'm actually not sure. Okay. I now know. I guess we'll get one when I'm in the area then. And yeah, this is still the. still the same stuff, so. I was about to say, if I find a frickin' Sandshrew on this first encounter, I might as well catch it, but don't need to. Also, can I mention how, like, 
I still hate the way that these trainers look from the side. Because that doesn't look like a ponytail to me, that just looks like a freaking Spartan helmet. It always looked weird to me. Like, I, I will never be able to see that the way they intended. Is this, uh, this is Magikarp dude, right? Yeah. Uh, I actually have pretty limited funds, I'm gonna say no. I'm not gonna use the Magikarp anyway, so it's like, whatever. So yeah, there's a, there's a definite confirmation for what I'm not using. Um, Gyarados came close to uh, to being on the team. It, it was pretty highly voted, but uh, not high enough. Okay, so as for Mount Moon here, um, like before, I could skip a lot of the trainers, but I'm not going to be, just because it's kind of useful, so... We'll do our usual little tour and get all the items. That's the TM for Water Gun, I believe. Yeah, freaking why is Water Gun a TM in this game? Fun story with Water Gun, though. Um, and by fun, I mean not really that impressive at all. Um, when I first played through Blue for the first time, hence why I said first, I don't know why I felt the need to repeat that, um, I caught a Jigglypuff. I think, yeah, it I was, try I was trying to remember if it was a Jigglypuff or a Clefairy. I'm pretty sure it was a Jigglypuff. Um, evolved it with a Moonstone almost immediately. And then I, like, because I had the guide, I looked at its information and noticed that it then wasn't going to learn any new moves. So I'm like, okay, well, this kind of sucks, so I'll have to teach it some other moves. So I taught it that Water Gun TM, and I think I taught it Mega Punch when I got that. And I realized very shortly after that, that I just wasn't really going to use it anyway, and so I just dropped it in the PC, never to be seen again. And that was a good use of two TMs, though to be fair, neither of them were all that great. Is this a Moonstone? No, this is a Potion. Okay. Potions are always appreciated. Suspicious men! So, yeah, why is there a bug catcher in here? I mean, I suppose there's no reason why it couldn't be. Ah, shit. Okay, at least there's a Pokemon Center nearby. I can go out and heal that. I have, uh, whatever 34 times 4 is number of steps to get to the... No! At least it's another stupid sub it. Don't need to worry about catching it. Yeah, okay, I'll see more of you later. Whatever. There we go. So, what's Pikachu's face when it's poisoned? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that is a good face. A good face to go with a good noise. Good lord. Okay. Alright, heading back in. Um, and immediately get attacked. So yeah, um... Zubat definitely deserves its re its reputation. I will admit hesitantly that uh, its evolutions are not actually that bad, like in battle and stuff. Like Crobat's surprisingly good. Golbat not as much, but you make use with what you can get, I guess, before Crobat exists. But uh, I definitely do hate finding them constantly. Please don't bust out. Okay. Yeah, common cave fodder, yeah. Yeah, going back to heal again, yeah. Alright. How many more trainers are there? I mean, obviously there's a lot of trainers in here. I just, I have a certain point where I'm going to be stopping for a bit. This will all make sense eventually. I, I really have no reason to be, like, slowly revealing my plan. I could just say what it is from the beginning, but, uh, for anybody who doesn't really know how the glitches in this game works, I'm gonna be explaining what I'm doing as I perform the trick. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, also another matter I wanted to bring up, um, 
since I- oh shit. Am I gonna- You know, not that I need to, but I have a feeling that if I intentionally died against this wild battle, I'd be able to do a variation of the Mew Glitch, because I think I am in just the right place for it. Yeah. Yeah, I could've. Okay. Whatever. But, uh... Yeah, something I want to bring up, just because it might be confusing to a few people, um... Whenever I say, like, differences for between this and red and blue, um... In my mind, I'm also thinking, like... Instead of red and blue, it's technically red and green and Japanese blue. And for anybody who doesn't know how that works, um... Basic rundown here, um... In Japan, the original two games were red and green, and the Pokemon distribution in them is the exact same as the red and blue that was released in every other country. Um, but, um, like, the only difference is, obviously, it's, like, they call it green instead of blue. Um, Japan did get a blue version, though. It was actually their third version before yellow. Yellow was their fourth. And, um... Okay, I should probably switch to get rid of this frickin' def uh, accuracy drop, because it's pissing me off. Um, but yeah, Japanese Blue is kind of its own beast. It uh, has a different Pokémon, like... I, I guess just distribution is the best word to put use for it. it. It has a different one than any other version. Um, it's kind of like... oh god. It's kind of like an in-between. Like, it has some exclusives from red and some from green. In some cases, it, like, has both exclusives from one version, but neither from a different... Like, like for example, um... I'm trying to think how to word... It. Like, I'm really bad at explaining this. Uh, like, red has access to Electabuzz, but not Magmar. And then green is the opposite. Japanese blue has neither. But then, whereas red has Scyther and green has Pinsir blue has both. It, it, just kind of stuff like that. And, um, some of the in-game trades are different. Why am I saving before picking up this item? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I do need to save, though, because I don't want to die. Um. Okay, Paris. I do need to catch one of these, so I guess I might as well. So, yeah, when I say red and blue, I'm usually referring to, uh, like, American red and blue, or not even specifically American, to just any other, any non-Japan version. But a lot of times it will refer to Japanese blue as well. And so whenever you see anybody saying that, like, green version was this horrible, like, beta, worse version with awful sprites, it's not wrong, but red was exactly the same. Like, the sprites that people like to make fun of um, always are called the green sprites, but they're technically the same ones used in red. Um, the ones in the, like, international red and blue are the ones from the Japanese blue. And the only other major difference... They changed the layout of Cerulean Cave, I think, and um, they apparently fixed some glitches, which you could, like... Uh, surprises me, because there's still a million left. I think there was some kind of problem with, like, if you went into the item menu, and you select to, like, reorganize, but then, like, backed out of the menu, it would remember that you're still trying to place an item, and you could, like, move an item into the Pokemon list and completely screw up the game. It was... It was pretty good. I don't know how they didn't catch that one. But... Enough of that for now. Let's, uh continue doing crap in here. So, because this is Gen 1, Magnemite is not a Steel type, so Quick Attack is uh, neutral against it, which is good news for me. Also, I like that Voltorb palette. I think it's the same one that Pikachu is using there, where it's like, instead of red, it's just kind of a orange, but it, I guess it's close enough. Still have not found a sand tree, surprisingly. 
Okay. I was about to say, as, as soon as I said that, now I'm probably going to, but no, apparently not. Oh my god, stop. There's rare candy, I will take that. Not really sure what my target level here is. Like I said, I'd... 20 is probably perfectly acceptable, because I'm pretty sure I was able to manage even lower than that. But, uh, I'm going to fight everybody I come across. And, uh, for the record, I knew that escape rope was there, too. There was still a reason for me to buy one, because I, I do, in fact, need two of them. Okay, I believe I'm going to be doing only two more trainers here, this being one of them. She has the grass types, so quick attack is going to be the way to go here. You know, considering I'm only training one Pokemon and, like, severely over-leveling everything I'm fighting, I'm still taking a lot more damage from stuff than I'd like to be. I mean, Pikachu is not exactly the most durable thing in the world, so that's probably why. But okay, and yeah, yeah, I think we're done in Mount Moon for right now. Um, so here's where things are about to get kind of stupid. I need to, uh, I need to be intentionally. Uh, removing all money that I possibly can from my inventory. Because I'm about to be losing some. So I might as well spend it on stuff that I want. So let's head back. Luckily with speed up that doesn't take very long. Alright, let's see. What can we buy? I can get 10 Pokeballs and somewhere around like 8 potions, so I've got my I've got the escape ropes I need. I don't need any of this stuff, so let's get how many Pokeballs do I have? Six. I would like a couple potions at least. Ah, well I do have two. And let me get like two more. Okay. Now when I uh, end up losing money, I won't have much to lose, so that's good. So let's see, how do we want to do this? Pikachu, I think you're going to have to take a little bit of a rest in the PC for a bit. Zubat is probably going to be my... Uh, it's okay, buddy. I'll take you out soon. Don't worry. I mean, you're going to be eventually going back into the PC for the remainder of the game, but you didn't hear me say that. Okay, so I'm about to finally explain what the hell I'm actually doing. Um, and for the record, this is not for a team member of any type. It's just so I can, like... Oh, my God. <laughs> this is specifically for... Pokedex reasons that I'm doing this, and of course now I find a freaking Sanchiro. Um, I've mentioned a few times that uh, there's like I, things I'm doing are like extensions of the Mew glitch and etc. And if you don't know what the Mew glitch is, then congratulations on avoiding it because it's fairly well known. But uh, basically, it's not only used for getting Mew, and the way to set it up is kind of stupid. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save right here, and we're about to see some stupid stuff happen. Um, let me go ahead and actually grab this item, because it's right here. Um, save again. I don't know why I didn't grab that in the first place. That's Mega Punch, by the way. Um, since there's a trainer at the bottom of the screen, um, some like trainers have different ranges of vision. Some of them can only spot you from like one or two spots from like one or two tiles away. Some of them can spot you all the way from the end of the screen. Uh, the way this game works is when you take a step, it kind of takes like a couple frames for a trainer to load in. 
So if you find a situation like this where there's a trainer off screen that'll spot you immediately, you can take advantage of that by holding start as you walk and then just kind of getting the hell out of there before they can do anything about it. So he saw me, but uh, was not able to battle me. And uh, so right now, we're back here, obviously. I cannot open the pause menu. I can't interact with signs. Um, I can still get into encounters, but uh, other than that, my abilities here are fairly limited. And the way to fix this is to get into a different trainer battle, um, because basically right now the game kind of thinks that I'm still being approached by a trainer, and so it locks all my controls. And so once the trainer actually does approach me, it'll fix the issue, and we won't have to worry about that anymore. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fight this guy down here. I left him on purpose. So let's let him approach. And it'll just be a battle as normal. Now, why did I deposit Pikachu? Um, that's because I intentionally want to lose to this guy. So, uh, hopefully I will be able to do that. <laughs> If this frickin' Zubat actually KOs this Rattata, then we've got a problem here. But, uh... There we go, okay. And, um... In later generations, when you lose a trainer battle, you lose, like, a set amount of money. But in Gen 1, you lose half of the money that you currently have. So that's why it's important to spend all your money, so you don't lose so much of it. All right, so that's done. Um, I have my controls back. And uh, it was, in fact, relevant that I battled that specific trainer. So let's go ahead and grab Firebird back. And I don't really need anybody else. I'll grab the Zubat just for, like, insurance. Or I already have the Zubat, so whatever. But yeah, um... The thing with the Mew glitch is it's most famous for letting you encounter Mew, obviously, but it can be used to encounter any Pokemon, and the way that it determines that is uh, whatever Pokemon you last battle, uh, it's special stat. Like right here, I've got 27. Uh, that Rattata had a special stat that is going to correspond to the index number of a Pokemon that I want to encounter here. So remember when I said I needed repels? This is why. Um, I need to not get into any encounters here, and uh, if I do, then it's going to mess the entire thing up, so we're going to be saving a lot and probably software setting, because I need to get back to the same floor as that Team Rocket guy. It doesn't have to be the exact area, but it has to be the same map at least, so we're almost there. If I knew how to do, like, RNG manipulation, I obviously would, but that is, uh, that is way beyond my level. Alright, so here we go. As soon as we go in this ladder, pause menu pops up, cancel it out, and we've got a Lickitung. Now, I'm going after a Lickitung here, uh, not because I want to use one but because uh, normally this thing is unavailable until Cerulean Cave. In the original games, by which I mean red and green or translated blue or whatever, um, in those games, uh, Lickitung was only available through an in-game trade, and then in Japanese blue it was moved into the Safari Zone, and in yellow it was moved into Cerulean Cave. So I could catch one at the end of the game, but um, I want to get one earlier, because part of my goal is to get basically like either I don't know if I'm gonna get all 151 because that would involve also getting Mewtwo early but I want to have like at least 149 Pokemon before the Elite Four I might also hold off on getting Mew I haven't decided that yet um, so this is basically just to get that done early and Zubat's about to die, so yeah. 
Hopefully that's low enough to catch it. This is another reason why I uh, saved so many times. Yeah. I don't really trust Pikachu to attack this thing. Like, maybe with a quick attack? I don't know what Lickitung's defenses are like. Yeah, this is taking way too many Pokeballs. Um, now that I'm in wrap, I might as well keep going. Okay, here, let's try it. Yeah. Alright, resetting. So, now let's find out if uh, the Mew Glitch actually lets you resume after reloading. Fuck. No. No, I need to reset again. I think it does, but I've had bad experiences with it also. Let's see. Okay, good. A what? What? Okay, so it made the menu pop up, but it didn't make the encounter happen. So yeah, you actually do have to do it all in one go. That means I got really frickin' lucky with not getting any encounters. Good lord. Grimer? Oh. Wait, I don't know. I know why there's a Grimer here. Okay. I think I know what's going on. I think I know exactly what's going on. Um, by resetting, the game is no longer storing the special stat of the Rattata. But by getting into a wild encounter there, it gave me a different one, and that was what the Grimer was. So yeah, if I go in here, I don't think... Yeah, nothing shows up. That sucks. So I have to go through that entire process again. Um, and that is something that can happen off-screen, because I am not showing that shit again. So I will be back when I uh, get a successful run. Okay, sudden change of plans. Um, <laughs> I realized that since I already used the escape rope... I uh, was going to have to go back and buy another one and redo that whole process, and it was going to be annoying. Um, so I realized that maybe if I got lucky with a special stat off of a wild Pokemon, I might get a Lickitung anyway, because it's in the correct range for this area. And instead I got a Gengar. Um, Gengar was actually what I was planning to get after Lickitung. It's, uh, it would have been triggered by the final Pokemon that that youngster was using, but uh, I guess now we can do this instead. So, yeah, that's a thing. Now I do still need to weaken this, um, and Leech Life is going to be neutral, I think. Yeah, it says it's super effective, but it's not, because it's uh, strong against poison in Gen 1, but it's bad against ghosts, so this is actually a pretty good whittling technique here. God, Gengar, you look creepy with the colors inverted like that. But yeah, um, reason I'm trying to catch a Gengar is because it's a trade evolution, and um, I do have the ability to trade because I've got a link cable and two GBAs and a copy of blue, so I would be able to do that. And if I was going to use a trade evolution on my team, I'd probably end up doing that, but, uh... Okay, this is kind of pissing me off a little bit. But yeah, I'm trying to see how much of the game I can complete without having to trade, so... Anything like this, I do want to try and catch this way. For the record, there's a whole bunch of trainers that can spawn Gengars on Route uh, 25 also. And that's where people usually get them, but uh, this works. This is fine. Okay, one more Leech Life ought to do it. And I don't know what this thing's catch rate's going to be like, but probably nothing spectacular. So let's see what we're in for here. I've got 13 Pokeballs. If I can't catch the Lickitung, I'm not going to be super upset, but I do want to catch this. Come on, game. I don't have a great ball, do I? No, I don't. 
Oh, you're gonna be a piece of shit, aren't you? God, the beeping. Someone kill it now. There we go, okay. That's fairly creepy. Alright, well there we go. Um, how many Pokeballs do I have left? Five? That's not horrible. So yeah, we're gonna consider that, uh, success. I do still want to get the Lickitung, though, which means I have to go through that whole song and dance again, so... Basically, I need to save before running away from the trainer, and then get into Mount Moon, doesn't matter how many encounters I have, then lose to the kid, and then go through Mount Moon again and get into the basement without having a single encounter, and then catch the Lickitung within five Pokeballs. Because I don't have any money, right? No, so... Um, yeah, I have to do all of that on one save. It doesn't sound like the most fun experience of my life, but uh, I do want to do it, so... Uh, we're going to start that, and like I said, you don't really need to watch any of it. Um, what? Hold on, game. Why? I, I think my, uh, I think my plans have come to a screeching halt here, and I'm not exactly sure why. <sighs> yes, thank you, encounters, I, I get it. Okay. Bro. What is this? Why, why you no fight me now? Okay. Well, he's the only long-range trainer in Mount Moon, so... I, I guess we're done with that plan. Like... Yeah, he still fights. He just doesn't spot me from... Wow, that's really stupid. Um, can someone explain that one for me? Because I... I think I had a problem with that when I went through Red on the Virtual Console, like where a couple long-range trainers just randomly got deactivated, but I don't know what causes that. That's really weird. I'm gonna have to look out for that because I do plan on doing a lot of Mewglitch stuff. Um, so whatever, I guess if he doesn't work anymore then we'll not worry about it. So I'm now regretting um, fighting all the trainers on Route 3, because some of those would also activate Lickitung. Oh, why am I healing this Zubat? I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. This whole episode's a freaking mess. At least I got Gengar. <laughs> not the one I was wanting to get, but it works, I suppose. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and finish up Mount Moon and we'll call this an episode, because I think it's already gone on long enough. Um, my plans for getting Lickitung early are not completely shattered. Um, I can still probably get one by just finding something with the right special stat in the wild. The problem with that is that it's up to luck. Oh, here I do have to catch a Sandshrew. Let's do that now. Be an asshole. Okay, good. Burn! And immediately go back to heal because, yeah, kind of need to. Still one Pokemon in Mount Moon I haven't encountered yet, and uh, I'm waiting for it to show itself because it, it's kind of surprising it's taken this long. But anyway, yeah, I was about to say, I, I can just encounter wild Pokemon to get the correct special stat for Lickitung. I think I need an 11. Um, it's like, it, it's completely up to luck if I get one, but it shouldn't be that bad. I don't know. Or I could do the Ditto trick, but that's not until way later in the game. So, go ahead and fight this dude, because he is worthless to me now. 
I might be able to still save the other trainer there, I'm not sure. If I can, then I'll leave him there just for ease of access, I guess. Yeah, thank you, this is the move I like to get hit by. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, can I slip past this kid here? Yeah, I can, okay. I'll leave him there then, um... Because I can still make use of him later on. Getting around with the Mew Glitch active and fighting the trainer that you need can sometimes be annoying, but it's not so bad. Okay, this guy, on the other hand, I think is going to be a massive pain to actually fight because he has a bunch of rock types. He's basically a stronger version of Brock from what I remember, and I do not have a uh, tail whip anymore, so I might want to leave this guy also. Um, because I really don't want to be spamming potions here. But let's just see how much quick attack actually does. That's not horrible. How many potions do I have left? Three. Uh, yeah, I think I can do this. Hope he doesn't have an Onyx. I'm fully expecting him to, though. Come on. Right. Yeah, he does. What do you know? Well, let's get Max Evasion up. Because if this thing hits me with Bind, then that's going to be just annoying in general. Oh, yeah, that's also a problem. Alright, probably want to heal again. And what piddly amount of damage am I going to do here? Eh. Still more than I thought I would do. missing with tackle. Oh boy, criticals. Wait, did that critical do less damage? I didn't weaken its defenses. That shouldn't have been the case. Slam, don't want it. Accuracy is too low on that move. Okay. It's no game. I'm trying to get in the ladder. Okay. Yes, we get it. There's Zubat here. Alright, so here is another thing that was changed in Mount Moon between versions. Um, originally, this guy had Eradicate that was um, strangely difficult for this part of the game. Oh, what the hell? Why is everybody's range messed up? That's really weird. Alright. But yeah, originally this dude had Eradicate, and what they did in yellow is they took a different Team Rocket guy from later in the cave and moved him here instead and got rid of the Eradicate guy completely. And instead of him, there's um, a different trainer encounter at the end that we'll be seeing in a little bit. Okay. Yeah, the rest of this is pretty much just a straight walk to the end. Yeah, the other trainer used to be here. He is no longer there. Let's grab ourselves a Moonstone. And what, is this guy not going to see me either now? I I'm kind of expecting that to be the case, honestly. Oh, what the hell? I mean... I guess. <laughs> I, I did still kind of want to battle him, though. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Alright, so I've learned today that apparently doing the Mew Glitch causes Trainer's line of sight to get messed up. I did not realize that was the case. Which is weird, because I've messed with it quite a bit. Maybe there's, like, only a certain circumstance that it does that. Anyone care to explain that? Like, I, I've said that already, but I, I, I really would like to know. 
There's gotta be someone watching who knows how that works. Hey look, it's a coughing. I'm totally not gonna have to fight another one of these in two seconds. But anyway. Did not draw any attention to the fact that I got a dome fossil. There, there may be a reason for that. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and leave, except, oh no. If you've never played Yellow, then yeah, this is, uh, this is Team Rocket from the show. They're, uh, they're in this game. I, I guess I probably should have mentioned at some point, although I figured probably most people already knew, um... Like, the original games came out before the show did. I, I, I think that's common knowledge, but there are some people who always th that thought that the show came first, I don't know. But yeah, um, Yellow is specifically supposed to be based off of the anime in certain respects. Um, not much is changed about it, but uh, obviously the Pikachu at the beginning and the appearance of uh, Jesse and James here are kind of the main things. Ugh. I'm kind of glad I saved before this fight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get being. Yeah, don't know if I'll be able to get out of this one. Yeah, yeah, you're an ass. I definitely can tell that. Okay, can I beat this coughing? Not going to bother thunder waving it. Don't think it'll help. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Critical? No? Shit. Okay. And this is why saving is a good thing. But anyway, um, I sure have gone through... Yeah, let, let me heal before the fight. That'll probably help. Um, I sure have just kind of gone through all of Mount Moon without finding a Clefairy. I mean, they are rare, but I usually find one. Also, I have this weird tendency, at least when I was, like, a kid, um... Whenever I get that hidden moonstone from that, like, little, like, thin area that you walk into, um, at least two times when I played this game, I, uh, had a Clefairy encounter basically Im immediately after getting that, and so it was, like, ingrained in my mind that it was, like, a set thing. Obviously, it wasn't, but that's just kind of a thing that I always remember now. Alright, let's try to get up some... Asian hacks here. Ugh. No. No, thank you. Alright. Now, if I can just take a few tackles from this coffin, I'll be good. That is the joy of double time. Did they give me 420? And there they go. Okay. So we are uh, we are most certainly done with Mount Moon here, but I still haven't found a Clefairy, and I need to do that. So I'm gonna wander a bit until I find one. There we go. All right. So let's hope that this thing doesn't uh, pull any strange punches. I don't really expect it to. Yeah, that's about what I expected. And don't get a random critical or anything. That should be good enough. If it's not, then I'll switch to Sandshrew. There we go. Okay. Mount Moon is officially done. Let's get the hell out of here. No, game. I said let's get out of here. That strange palette for a second there. Great ball would have been handy earlier, but what can you do? And I think there's one other item I can get. Uh, yeah, I think this is Whirlwind, which is a uh, entirely worthless TM in this game. Could probably just sell it. 
I don't like selling unique items, but it is completely pointless. Uh, this is Route 4. That grass has the same encounters as Route 3 in yellow version. In uh, red, you can find Ekans. In blue and green, you can find Sandshrew. That's about it. Um, there, can I get this Bulbasaur? Or does Pikachu hate me? Apparently I can, okay. That was actually not what I intended to do, because I really should just be ending this freaking video by now, but uh, I wanted to grab this before I forget about it. Okay, so yeah, next time, um, various shenanigans involving Cerulean City and the surrounding areas, and, um, we're about to get our first actual team member here, and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you probably won't expect what it's gonna be, so, uh, have fun guessing. I know there are 150 Pokemon out there, but is there really one more adorable than Pikachu? <laughs> I don't think so.